Will Sonny Balwani get the same prison sentence as Elizabeth Holmes? I'll tell you why I think he may get more time or maybe he'll get less time. And we'll also take a look at the possible prison locations that Sonny Balwani could be sent to, as well as thank you to all of those of you who voted in our poll as to how much time you think Sonny Balwani will be sentenced to. And I'm also going to address all of your questions and comments. So thanks again for submitting them. So hi there, I'm Michelle Hagan. I'm a legal analyst and a former prosecutor. You may recognize me because I've done a ton of videos and provided a lot of legal analysis on the Elizabeth Holmes trial and the Sonny Balwani trial. So in case you popped onto this channel, this video is for education and information. Simply my opinion. I want to know what your opinion is. So please do leave a comment or a question and hit that like button and please subscribe and support my work. And if you want to contribute to me making these videos, I'll put a PayPal link in the description box below to get a video. And thanks again for all of those of you who have subscribed and supported Michelle's analysis. Okay, so who is Sonny Balwani? He was the COO of Theranos a blood testing company started by Elizabeth Holmes, who was the CEO. She was convicted back in January of 2022 of four counts of wire fraud. Sonny Balwani went to trial separately. He was convicted on all 12 counts, including conspiring to defraud investors with Elizabeth Holmes, conspiring to defraud patients, as well as defrauding individual investors to the tune of approximately $155 million. So, Sonny Balwani is scheduled to be sentenced on December 7th. And again, it's up to the judge. It's in the judge's discretion. Although we're gonna take a look at the federal sentencing guidelines, the judge determines what the appropriate sentence is. Okay, so speaking of sentence, Let's take a look at what your poll said. So thank you to all those of you who had voted in our community poll. 46% of you voted that you think Sonny Balwani will get the same sentence as Elizabeth Holmes. 30% of you voted that you think Sonny Balwani will get 12 or more years in prison. 21% of you voted 9 to 11 years. And 2% sided with the defense thinking that Sonny Balwani will get probation and no prison. Now again, both Holmes and Balwani's defense teams both recommended neither of their clients, neither Holmes or Balwani serve any time in prison. They both were seeking probation. So let's go ahead and take a look at, and thanks again to all of those of you voted. Um, do you think he's going to get more time, less time, same amount of time? I think there are some factors, and one in particular, that could give Sonny Balwani more time than Elizabeth Holmes. And stay tuned for your questions, too. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what the defense has argued in their sentencing memo, sentencing recommendation to the judge. Now, keep in mind the prosecution is recommending 15 years, the same 15-year prison sentence they recommended on Elizabeth Holmes. Keep in mind that also it's a conspiracy case, right? So, you know, do they get same sentence or different sentence? Sonny Balwani was convicted on all 12 counts, Holmes only on four. So, Balwani's attorneys argue it's not the same as Elizabeth Holmes. He actually invested millions of dollars of his own money in Theranos, he never sought fame or recognition, and he has a long history of quietly giving to those less fortunate, dating well before his time at Theranos, without seeking any recognition or benefit. They go on to say they are truly there are truly evil people in the world who take pleasure in defrauding vulnerable people. There are also those who try to make the world a better place even if they still engage in conduct that a jury finds violated those statutes. He did not profit, nor did he try to profit. He worked day and night to build a company that he thought would change the landscape of diagnostic testing for the better. So again, just like Holmes, Balwani is arguing he's a do-gooder. 
He didn't profit. Um, he didn't. Um, he didn't seek any fame or recognition, right? Unlike, I guess, what they're implying Holmes did. But this is a conspiracy case. Did the two of them agree to commit a crime to defraud investors? In this case, it's wire fraud, right? Did they make representations, make statements that were false to investors to get their money, right? To the tune of either 155 million or 144 million, uh, as far as what Elizabeth Holmes was convicted on. The prosecution is arguing, no, no, they should be treated the same. In fact, Balwani is an equal participant in this conspiracy, these wire fraud counts, and that he is an equal participant and he also um, took efforts to quash the truth or to squash the truth, right? As to what was actually going on with the technology. Was it fast, was it accurate, and was it reliable? So they're asking, the prosecution is asking for a longer term, more time than Elizabeth Holmes because of those patient counts that Balwani was convicted on, Elizabeth Holmes was not convicted on. In each one of these 12 counts, carry a maximum prison time of 20 years in prison, okay? But it's up to the judge again, right? These sentencing guidelines, which we'll take a look at, are just advisory. They're not mandatory. Okay, so, and I'm also going to get to the factors as to what I think could increase or possibly decrease, you know, other potential arguments, right, that are out there. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at quickly remind you of where we're at on this um, sentencing guideline here. Just kind of do a quick review of what happened in the home sentence. You know, she was sentenced to 11 years and three months, so 135 months. So here's the federal sentencing guidelines that again are advisory. Okay, so we're dealing with fraud and fraud, you start at the base level seven and then you go up or down depending on the amount of loss, okay? or I should say you go up depending because there is no increase if it's less than 6,500. Okay, so what the Holmes defense and the Balwani defense is arguing is for the court to apply possibly a level six. So that takes her to a level or a step six to a level 13. But what the prosecution is arguing is actually um, more like level 30 because they're accumulating all of the loss of all the investors, not just the ones in the indictment, but also the patients. And they, in the Holmes uh, sentencing memo, said that the amount of loss, the government said the amount of loss was over 550 million. It was actually 803 million. Okay, but the judge did some calculations, which I'll get to in a moment. So anyway, it depends on what the amount of loss is. Okay, so here's one of the factors that could give Sonny Balwani more time, okay? Because following me, follow me on the math here. I know it's Monday, but we'll get through it. So in the home sentencing, the judge found that the am initial amount of loss was 384 million, 384 million. It was more than if you just tallied those six investor counts that Balwani was convicted of, which is the approximately 155 million. They also can judge also, it appears that he also considered the loss to Safeway, the loss to Walgreens and some of the other investors. So starting point, the amount of loss. And the reason the amount of loss matters is because the greater amount of loss, the more money that you defraud people of, the more time you're looking at serving in prison. Okay. So, the prosecution is going to want to say it's a higher amount of loss. The defense is going to want to say it's a lower amount of loss for less prison time. The defense wants leniency. They want the judge to be lenient and to just give Sonny Balwani probation. Okay, prosecution wants 15 years. Okay, so 384 million minus, according to the government's expert witness who does business valuations of how much what was the worth, what was the value of Theranos at the time these investors invested in Theranos, at the time the fraud occurred? Because they're saying the amount of loss should be offset by the reasonable value of that company at the time. So 
It was 384 million minus approximately 237 to 273 was the reasonable value calculation. That was the approximate range. So if I did my math right, it's approximately 114 to 147 million was the loss for Elizabeth Holmes. But keep in mind, Sonny Balwani was convicted of additional investor counts. So he's looking at approximately an additional 10 million. So that puts the loss at 124 to 157 million. And why that matters is go ahead and take a look at here on N. If it's more than 150 million, 150 million, <laughs> that's a lot of money. If it's more than 150 million, you add 26 steps. So 26 plus seven, which is the base level, is 33, which is what Elizabeth Holmes was sentenced to without considering the aggravating factors, which we'll get to. So just on the amount of loss, if I did the calculation right, and if the court relies on this estimate, this reasonable value estimate from this expert, then Sonny Balwani is looking at an additional two steps. So more than level 31, which is what Elizabeth started at, and then you added the aggravating factor. So he's already two steps above Elizabeth Holmes. Okay, so that's one factor. Depending on how they calculate the amount of loss for those additional convictions, Sonny Balwani is potentially looking at a longer sentence because the step level is increased by two, all right? And why that matters is because let's take a look at the sentencing range. So the defense is arguing, both Balwani and Holmes defense argued it was level 13 or below. So they're saying that the amount of loss was around 40 million plus, uh, so that gives you about a zone, a level 13, which is about 12 to 18 months okay probation or prison depending on how you look at it but what the prosecution and i assume probation is also recommending the same nine years that they recommended with elizabeth holmes i assume but if they're making that recommendation we're looking at a level 31 on up the government is saying level um 43 because if you calculate all the additional aggravating factors it gets much higher okay so i hope i'm not making this too complicated so let's just go ahead and look at Elizabeth Holmes got level 33, which was 135 months. She got 31 because it was step 24 plus the seven is 31. Then the judge increased by two because of aggregating factors, the number of victims, right? And um, the amount of loss, okay? So with Balwani, if the judge does the one factor, the amount of loss being over 150 million, He's looking at level 33 because it's seven plus 26 is 33. Now the question is, does the judge go up from here to level 35, which is what the prosecution is recommending, which is the 15 years, 168 months, or does the judge give Elizabeth Holmes the same sentence? Okay, now here's my second factor that I think the judge might consider as an aggravating factor for Bar Balwani because he was convicted on those patient counts. Elizabeth Holmes was not convicted. So the factor in particular, let's take a look at what it is. So base level is seven, so loss, I talked to you, that's one factor I'm thinking about. The 10 or more victims, I think he's definitely gonna get that as well, just like Elizabeth Holmes, so that's an additional two steps. And here's the other one that I think will be interesting. Because Balwani was convicted on the patient counts, does this third factor under Section B here, an offense involving the conscious or reckless risk of death or serious bodily injury? Because Balwani could be argued, he was the one who was in charge of the lab, right? Those patient blood test results turned out to be an error in several of those accounts, the prostate cancer, the false uh, miscarriage result, et cetera, which is what the jury found Balwani guilty of, those patient counts. 
can the judge now apply an additional two steps if the judge finds, excuse me, that Balwani created a risk of death on those patient counts? Now, as to C, adjustment for the role in the offense, what the government has argued, the prosecution has argued that there's a criminal enterprise between Balwani and Holmes. You know, they planned this out to get the money, to make these statements to the investors, to get the money because their company was failing, right? So in the home sentencing, the judge did not give an enhancement or it did not increase the sentence because of the criminal enterprise role. So the judge didn't find a criminal enterprise. I don't think he will in Balwani's sentence any, either. So the question is, the two factors that could increase Balwani's sentence would be how the judge calculates the amount of loss. If it's more than $150 million, he's looking at more time. If the judge considers the conviction of the patient counts applies, uh, shows that there was a reckless risk of death or serious bodily injury to the patients or potential patients, that could increase his sentence as well. Okay, so now let's take a look at, um, I want to just remind you here of the acquittal order. Now, this is the order that the judge issued. This was his finding when Elizabeth Holmes tried to get a judgment of acquittal. And as I've always said, words matter. Look at what the judge said about Balwani. Okay. So let's go here where I've underlined in blue here. The evidence show and a reasonable juror could find that the defendant and Mr. Balwani conspired with each other to commit wire fraud to save Theranos from financial ruin. And why that matters is because if the defense is arguing that Sonny Balwani didn't profit, he was basically trying to do good, right? That's what they both tried to argue is that they were trying to do something good in the world, you know, make affordable, fast, accurate, reliable, quick blood testing. That was to be a good thing for the world. Okay. But the jury found, no, 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 no. It was fraud. Okay. So look at what the judge says, trying to save the company from financial collapse. Defendant and Mr. Balwani on line two, defendant Mr. Balwani then pursued private investors and knew Theranos' relationship with Walgreens and Safeway, despite knowing that the relationship with Walgreens, the rollout of these wellness centers was stagnating. And here's the judge said, text messages and emails, right? Look at the videos I've done on the text between Elizabeth Holmes and Sonny Balwani. He's talking about the lab being a effing disaster zone. And I'll show you those texts real quick here. But, you know, the text messages and the emails between the two showed that they conspired. Elizabeth said in a text to Balwani, we need to stop fighting fires by not creating them. In other words, they knew that they were having issues with the technology, yet they're letting people rely on the results, that they're out there marketing, that these that their technology, that Theranos technology was working and that patients, you know, strolling into these wellness centers and Walgreens could rely on that. Doctors could make decisions, possibly change a patient's prescriptions based on the results of these blood tests. And here the judge quotes that same text. Norman D. Lab is an explicit effing disaster zone. Defendant text Balwani with about securing $150, $150 million, I should say, investment from the Walton family and from Mr. Murdoch. And then there's the text about Elizabeth reaching out to Sonny saying, should we remove materials out of the investment binder? We're going to give Murdoch. I mean, why are they doing that? Why are you withholding information? Okay. And then um, talking about, let's see, the evidence supports a conclusion that the defendant and Mr. Balwani lied, not misrepresented, lied to investors about the capabilities and the financial security of Theranos to, invade and to obtain investments to keep Theranos afloat. 
So keep that in mind. That's what the judge said. He sat there through the trial for the four months of trial. I was there watching it. This was his analysis of the evidence that they lied, they conspired, they worked together. This is the judge who's also now going to be sentencing Sonny Balwani. Okay, so let's take a look at, I want to quickly show you here the text, some text here. Now, if they're going to say, the defense is going to argue he didn't profit, he was basically a do-gooder, he wasn't seeking any fame. Well, here's a text from Sonny Balwani to Elizabeth on May 6, 2015, during the time of these counts in the indictment during the time of the fraud, he says, we need our heads down and execute, bring billion equity and billion revenue. No, he's not seeking a profit here, just he's seeking billions. Revenue is the most important of all. Not patience, not making an affordable product, not changing health care. Revenue is most important, Elizabeth Holmes says to Sunny Balwani. Okay, let's look at a couple other ones. This is kind of just to refresh your memory here. It's been a while. Uh, this is where Sonny's talking about the negative review they're getting, and they're trying to figure out who these whistleblowers are, and go ahead and take a look at the video I did on the whistleblowers. I mean, if they're going to say this is a do-gutter who quietly gave to basically to charity, right? His goal here was to help, um, you know, do something good for the world. He's talking about will get him and he says to elizabeth nail this mofo is what he says in his text okay now i understand this is in the climate of business but still the whistleblowers were tyler erica and adam they're the ones who went to john Carew, who put that wall street journal article out there that blew the whistle on theranos okay i wanted to show you something else here he worked day and night for six days this six years day and night to help elizabeth and that she was upset with him for not doing everything he wanted me to do. You know, if they're going to say that he had a lesser role in this company, go ahead and take a look at these texts. He actually says here on July 15th, I am responsible for everything at Theranos. All have been my decisions too. Yeah, it's a conspiracy. Work together, conspired to defraud investors and patients. That's what the jury found at Sonny Balwani, right? You can go ahead and take a look at this. He's saying he's concerned if he leaves that she doesn't get it. She doesn't understand the problems and the challenges. He doesn't like the direction she's taking the company. And then they bring up, the defense brings up, you know, this no profit. He doesn't, um, he doesn't, it can he profit here. He repeatedly says as in these texts that he wants to break even. I can leave then when I break even. Until then you need me. We'll break even and then I will leave. We need to break even. So what is he talking about here? Getting the money that he loaned Theranos back? And also, the wire fraud does not require that the defendant profit, okay? It's, it, the wire fraud conviction does not require that a defendant does not seek fame or recognition. Those are just red herrings, okay? Was the money defrauded? Did they make misrepresentations to investors and patients? He says here, look at the last one. The only fix is cash and break even. Everyone has only been nice to us because of greed. Greed. Well, you know, you also have to consider the lifestyle. I think they were living in Atherton, which is a Tony neighborhood, a very nice, expensive neighborhood in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. You know, uh, I'm sure he took a salary. So it what you know his motive doesn't have to be to profit. That's the point I want to make. Okay, the other let me see if there's anything else. You can go ahead and read these. Um, this is about the John Kerry article going out. You know they know that they're now the whistle's been blown. He's um here's where I think an argument could be made that Sonny Balwani maybe should get less time. Okay, keep an open mind here. Maybe Sonny Balwani should get less time because he was trying to rein Elizabeth Holmes in. He's expressing he's worried about the FDA. He's worried about the Center for Medicare Services, that audit that they did of the lab. Um, he says that you have to take the risk, though. 
And then he gets into, I think there's the part, let me get to it. Oh, where she wants to talk about, uh, I think it's with Murdoch about saying death and sex. I guess it's, just, I guess those are in reference to getting immediate results on blood tests to let you know whether or not you've been exposed to certain things. Sonny's trying to rein her in and say, don't talk about that. Don't make this about death or sex. That's not a good point. Uh, then they're talking about how everyone's bailing now because that Wall Street Journal article came out. We're losing leverage fast. Have you talked to WAG, which is Walgreens? And then uh, he tells her that, uh, he tells Elizabeth Holmes that they won't talk to us unless um, their lawyers told them not to talk to us. And then Sonny talks about, you know, the issue around the finger sticks. They didn't tell Walgreens they stopped doing the finger stick tests, which is what they were marketing and advertising and part of the contract negotiations. Sonny says it's going to be a difficult 12 months and the lab again failed, right? So Walgreens is freaking out, lack of transparency. Why didn't we tell them? You can go ahead and read this. Um, Sonny's telling her that, telling Holmes that she needs to be transparent. Why we didn't tell them? What was our thinking on that? He said none. We didn't think about not telling them for three to four weeks that we weren't doing the finger stick nanotainer. And here's where Sonny says, I'm worried about all, I'm worried about your, Elizabeth Holmes statements, all finger sticks on our technology comment. And that's in reference to Elizabeth Holmes got on Mad Money with Jim Cramer. She tried to do damage control knowing that Wall Street Journal article was out, blowing the whistle. And she made the comment, all finger sticks on our technology, which is what was concerning to Balwani. Maybe that could be argued that he was less culpable. He was trying to do the right thing. Maybe less time. Maybe a good reason for leniency. Uh, you can go ahead and read, take a look at this. He's talking about, you know, they're going back and forth about what to do about the nanotainers and about the FDA, etc. And here's where Sonny steps in and he talks about those um, ads that they were rolling out in Arizona marketing these wellness centers and Sonny says to Elizabeth looking at all the TV and print ads it's not a good idea to talk about pricing so he's trying to rein her in and then he wanted to pull those ads but it was too late to pull them because of some statements that were made in those ads and then he says to Elizabeth we should pause TV for a couple months and radio for one month so why is that? Is he, is he, does he have a concern? Does he think the statements were inaccurate? So that's just, you know, maybe a reason for a lesser sentence. Maybe he's less culpable because he was trying to rein her in. Maybe he's less culpable because this was his girlfriend. He invested millions in the company. He was trying to keep her dream afloat. Yes, it was a dream, right? According to the jury when they convicted her of fraud, right? So um, let's take a look at, uh, I got to look at my notes here. Um, let's look at whether or not, I mean, what do you think? Do you think, do you think he should get more time or less time? Is any of this persuasive to you? Um, do you think, you know, that he was trying to rein her in, that he wasn't seeking a profit and again, a profit doesn't matter. But, you know, that's what the defense is arguing. Okay, so let's look at, um, let me take a look here at the possible, um, oh, let me look at your questions, actually. Let's get to those real quick here. Okay, so Hugo Byrne, thank you for subscribing and being an early subscriber. I appreciate all your questions and all your analysis. Hugo asks, and by the way, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Hugo asks, will the prosecution bring up the missing database as an aggravating factor? And will Balwani have to surrender sooner than Holmes? Okay, well, the missing database, they, uh, Balwani doesn't, the Balwani defense doesn't appear to directly bring that up yet. Doesn't mean they won't bring it up on appeal. Um, and it doesn't look like the prosecution's bringing it up as an aggravating factor. I mean, there's already a substantial amount of prison time that Balwani's facing and whether or not it's a criminal enterprise, how it's calculated in the loss and whether he gets additional time because he was convicted on patient counts. 
maybe that's enough, right? As far as the sense, because that's a pretty long, he's looking at 11 years plus, or slightly under 11 years, if the defense can successfully convince the judge that he has a lesser role, less culpable. Um, will Balwani surrender sooner than Holmes? Well, that depends on the Bureau of Prisons. They're the ones who decide where a, a uh, felon goes, which of the facilities, and I'll talk to you about the possible five prison camps that Balwani could get sentenced to. So the date of surrender is determined by the Bureau of Prisons. Now, there are more prisons housing male offenders than there are female offenders. So Balwani theoretically could surrender sooner, but we'll have to see, and we'll also have to see if the judge makes a recommendation on which facility, which prison to send Sonny Balwani, because the judge recommended Elizabeth Holmes go to um, a particular uh the Bryan facility in Texas, the Bryan prison. So, um, good question. Uh, all right, and then Hugo also asks, will there be a determination if Holmes will serve time in prison while the appeal is pending? That's gonna be a motion by both Balwani and by Holmes because both of them are gonna wanna serve time outside of prison pending their appeal. It's up to the judge. I think it's very unlikely that either one of them will serve their sentence out of custody, out of prison, awaiting the appeal decision. Both Balwani and Holmes, in my opinion, and again, this video is my opinion, in my opinion, both of them will serve time awaiting the appeal decision, okay? Um, so, thank you for that question, Hugo. Okay, so David Anderton made very good, excellent analysis here. And this is what he said. I anticipate a somewhat longer sentence, 12 to 13 years for Balwani. Why? Number one, Balwani was convicted on, on, on all counts. Now, again, that's not determinative, right? Because the judges, this judge in particular, doesn't appear, and most judges in federal system don't apply each count consecutively. They just increase it at uh, the amount of time depending on the amount of loss and that's why that's such a sticky issue and so ripe for an appeal right think about jeff Schilling, the enron executive the judge in that case he was convicted by a jury sentenced to a significant amount of time he appealed his conviction the appellate court found that the judge made a sentencing error sent it back to the trial judge to do resentencing the prosecution offered a less time deal for Jeff Schilling and he took that. So he ended up because of his appeal, he got, and because of a judge making a sentencing error, which I don't think is gonna happen in this case at all, uh, but we'll have to see how the loss calculations, because numbers sometimes, you know, can change things depending on how you calculate them, right? <laughs> fraud, okay, so we're talking about a fraud case here. So anyway, David said, Number two, there's a greater dollar amount of loss, which is true for Balwani. Number three, two-point increase due to potential harm to individuals, which is what I brought up, the patient counts. Number four, Sunny's active involvement in Theranos almost perfectly aligns with the time frame. This is a very good point. The time frame cited by the prosecution when Theranos went, in, went from a faltering start into a fraudulent enterprise. I think the judge may well conclude that Sunny was the catalyst to push the false claim on investors. That's interesting. Uh, that's an interesting argument. I think I think it could be argued that both of them, right? She was out there. She was the face of the company. She had stacked a, a quite a reputable board of directors who had incredible reputations, right? That they could trade off of and and uh, persuade other people to invest, right? So, um, very interesting. Okay, so Jackie says, thanks, Michelle. You're welcome, Jackie. Thank you for subscribing. She says she can hardly wait until Wednesday. And then DB says, I think Balwani will actually get out of prison around seven years, maybe a tad longer. Same for Holmes, too. That's a good point, DB. Um, usually in the federal system, they serve about 85% of the sentence. So, you guys do the math. All right, and then Pictor said he thinks, he or she thinks that it should be 12 plus years 
for Balwani because it's medical fraud plus wire fraud is more serious than Holmes's wire fraud. Well, there isn't technically any medical fraud. They're all wire fraud counts, but I get your point. It's related to the patients, right? The counts that Balwani was convicted of. So maybe, you know, I think it's definitely one of the factors the judge can consider an aggravating factor to increase the sentence for Balwani. More time for Balwani than Holmes. There's also no factors in mitigation for Balwani. He didn't accept any responsibility. Elizabeth Holmes took the stand, right? And she accepted some responsibility for those logos that she misappropriated. But here's the thing. A defendant cannot be penalized for not taking the stand because they have the right to remain silent. So that argument can't be used against him. However, there could be other ways he could have accepted responsibility, I guess. But I don't know. That's a you don't want to go in that area because that would that's a very um that would be a very troublesome issue on appeal, okay? So a defendant is not penalized. He's not given more time. He or she is not given more time if they don't testify or they don't accept responsibility. But it could help if they did because it would it's a mitigating factor. Okay? So there's no mitigating factors for Balwani either. So Let's see what other notes I have here. Um, oh, okay. So restitution. There will be a rest if, assuming Balwani is sentenced and one of the terms is restitution to pay back these investors and patients, there'll be a restitution hearing set sometime down the road, just like with Holmes, okay? Will they appeal? Will Balwani appeal? Definitely. Both Holmes and Balwani are fighting this and they're gonna they're gonna pull out all stops for the appeal although the appeal will be decided on the trial transcript, right? What happened at the trial? Was there any errors that are appealed at the trial? There's no new witnesses. The appellate court makes a decision based on words, words and rulings. What's in those briefs? What's the prior case law? What are the arguments made, right? And was there any error committed at the trial? So we'll have to see if that happens. In an appeal, you know, it takes generally two years, depending on the caseload of the appellate court. They're difficult to win. And when I have a moment, I'll try to do an appeal video, especially when we get the opening briefs filed by Elizabeth Holmes, because uh, she's the first to appeal. Sonny Balwani has till, I think around December 21st to file his notice to let the court know whether or not he's going to appeal his convictions. I think it's gonna be guaranteed he's gonna appeal his convictions. Okay, so let's talk about where? What are the potential prison locations? Assuming Sonny Balwani gets sentenced to prison, there are six prison camps, four for male offenders. It looks like Elizabeth Holmes is likely going to be going to the women's facility, the Bryan, Texas prison camp. So that leaves um, five. Did I do my math right here? Let's see. Four, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Four facilities for the men. Okay, so locations potentially. Yankton, South Dakota. Duluth, Minnesota. Montgomery, Alabama. Or Pensacola, Florida. Those are the four potential prison locations that Sonny Balwani is looking at. All of those facilities house approximately... 300 to 390 male offenders, okay, male prisoners. So again, the judge may recommend which facility. The defense may request a particular facility. The judge can make a recommendation to the Bureau of Prison, but it's the Bureau of Prisons that determines where the defendant, where a convicted felon would go, okay? So I hope I covered everybody's questions, and thank you to all of those of you who submitted questions. Thanks for voting in the poll. And please do leave a comment. I want to know what your analysis is, right? I want to know what your thinking is. And by the way, here's a question for you. Can you engage in critical analysis when censorship is taking place? Interesting question. Maybe I'll do a video on that one. But anyway, back to Balwani. Do you think he's going to get the same sentence? Do you think he's going to get 11 years, three months, that 135? Do you think he's going to get the 168 months, the 15 years of prosecution? Do you think he's going to get more time because he got convicted on the prison, on the patient counts, and that could relate to 
greater harm, right? Serious bodily injury, because Elizabeth wasn't convicted on those counts. Or do you think he might get less time? Because it looks like he was trying to rein Elizabeth Holmes in. And again, I don't think those arguments about he didn't profit, he wasn't seeking fame or recognition, none of that's required for a wire fraud conviction. Those are red herrings. I understand what they're doing there. You know, they're trying to paint him as a do-gooder. I get it. But those texts between Elizabeth Holmes and Sonny Balwani, the Normandy lab was a effing disaster zone. Oh, boy. So go ahead, take a look at the videos I've done on the text between the two of them. Look at the whistleblower text. You know, he said he wanted to nail those mofos. Who are those nofos? Tyler Schultz, Erica Chung, and Adam Rosendorf. And look at that video, that letter that they sent to Erica Chung, that they sent to Erica Chung, I think it was 20 or 21. Can you imagine getting that letter at that age? The way they were treated. Anyway, just my opinion. So sentencing is on Wednesday, December 7th for Sonny Balwani. Do leave a comment, hit that subscribe button. Please support my work by subscribing. Thank you to all of those of you who have subscribed to Michelle's analysis. I appreciate the support. And if you want to contribute to me making these videos, I'll put a PayPal link in the description box below the video. So thanks for watching and please do subscribe.